Hey guys, Car Show 72 checking in from the Car Center of Excellence. Uh, got a video this morning I've been wanting to make, um, of course, on a whiteboard with lots of stuff. And I will make sure I've taken a picture of this whiteboard and will post it so it can just be a clean thing you can pause and screenshot or whatever because there is a lot of information to cover on my whiteboard today. Uh, I feel kind of like the engineering explain kid uh, with some of this, but it's how I work. I like whiteboards. I like explaining things visually. Um, this is something I video I've been wanting to make for a while, uh, really talking about lowering springs and bump stops and how they impact uh, the ride of the car and what they really are versus what you read online. Um, Throw me a subscribe to my channel. Um, I'm, I'm getting up there in, in subscriptions and uh, it really helps me out when people subscribe. Uh, keeps me motivated to want to do this. I do these in the morning oftentimes after my family has left for the day for work or school. I'm, I work at home and so it's kind of a quiet time in the morning when I've had my coffee. I'm a little juiced up on caffeine and uh, I'm very clear thinking in the morning usually. So that's why I you know get up at 8.30 or sorry, make these videos at 8.30 in the morning. So uh, all right, let's get into it. I will try to walk through this in some logical fashion so it's not a shit show. So we're going to talk about uh, lowering springs. We're going to talk about bump stops, okay? And your suspension on a car like my sport wagon or your GTI or whatever that you want to lower. The first thing that we need to get out of the way is the term bump stop, while commonly used, probably isn't the best term. The better term is actually microcellular jaunts bumper or foamy John's bumper. And those things are actually progressive helper springs. Okay. It's not a solid piece of rubber that you hit when you hit your bump stop, as many people like to say online. Now in the old days on live axle cars or trucks and things like that, you did have a actual bump stop. It was a piece of rubber or polyurethane uh, that was very, very thin. And it was just to protect metal on metal contact. But in 2023, we're using these jaunts, these foamy jaunts bumpers. Um, I'm going to link uh, down in the description, a lot of information. Maybe I'll put some links in the video throughout, but H and R, uh, the company that makes, uh, springs, one of the companies, uh, very prolific company in that suspension market has a really cool little article. I'll link about, uh, what microcellular Johns poppers are. I'm also going to link a great podcast. I forget the name of it, but it includes a discussion with Steve Dynan. Uh, so Dynan was a big name in BMW tuning and suspension, and he's, uh, kind of like a god in that community. And he's got some really good uh, information in this podcast. It's really long, so you're going to, you know, it's something you might listen to driving or something, but going into how the the jaunts bumpers or the bump stops are really a co key component of your suspension and can actually be used to tune the car, okay? Um, all right, so let's get into it. We talked about a, maybe a better name for it. We talked about that these things are actually progressive helper springs in your suspension. The engineers have designed your suspension on a stock car to utilize this helper spring as part of the suspension. So first thing, progressive versus linear. Okay, so a linear uh, progressive spring. So on our x-axis, we have inches of compression and on the y-axis, we have spring rate. So spring rates are usually uh, thrown around in the U.S. at least as um, so many pounds per inch compression. So the way a linear spring works, I have a linear spring uh, that is uh, 50 pounds per inch. I put 50 pounds on it. It compresses one inch. I put another 50 pounds on it. So I'm now at 100 pounds. It compresses two inches. And it will do that with every 50 pounds. It will compress one inch until the spring is fully compressed and the coils are touching each other. That is a linear spring. That's almost always how springs are. Uh, I've talked about mountain bike suspension before in a video. That's how mountain bike suspension would be. That's how race car suspension is. Uh, and that's actually mostly how your OE suspension is. <laughs> We get into this side of progressive springs with these jaunts bumpers or jaunces um, and lowering springs oftentimes. And here we have a bit of a different curve. So for every additional pound uh, that you've added to the uh, spring, um, the rate increases some kind of exponential value. So maybe you put 50 pounds on it and it compresses one inch. Now you put 50 pounds on it. The rate is actually now higher. Uh, than it was before. And so now you need maybe 50 pounds only compresses it a half an inch and so on. And so your jaunces are progressive. They're not linear springs. Um, 
All right, so I've got a big picture here with lots of measurements of a Bilstein strut, which is really common on a lot of performance cars as an upgrade. And I have a picture of a, a what I'm going to call a, a dual rate lowering spring. Now, the term progressive gets thrown around. Bro, I don't want progressive springs, man. I need linear springs. Okay, well, actually, what you have on almost every lowering spring I've ever seen is actually really a linear spring effectively. It has two parts. I'm going to put a picture in the video coming up here as I talk, and I'll show you my H&Rs with this example perfectly shown. The spring length is probably pretty close to what your factory spring is. The difference is there's two parts of the spring. There's a part that looks like the coils are really close together, and when the car is sitting under its own weight on the ground, they're touching. And then there's a part that looks like a normal coil spring. Okay, so it's really just two rates. They're both linear, effectively. And this rate might be really, uh, maybe the main rate you're going for is 275 pounds per inch. This could be like 100 pounds per inch or 50 pounds per inch. The coils are really close together. And these are called helper spring. It's a helper coil or dead coil. A lot of people would ask, oh, is something wrong with my car? The springs are collapsed. It's actually by design. And it acts as a spacer. This is actually the linear portion of the spring you drive on. So even, a, even a, a dual rate lowering spring that's often referred to as progressive is really linear as you drive, but it is not. It's actually two different rates with some sort of transition. I forget how that works. It's probably kind of instantaneous as it transitions. The only time these come into play, so this is your car hanging there. You've jacked it up, the wheels off the ground. You lower it down, and the first thing that happens is these collapse. So, but when you extend it, they expand. So the only time these matter is when you're hitting, let's say this is the, the ride height is my lower thumb. You're hitting bumps, boom, 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 and you do that. Boom, you jump. Your Dukes of Hazard jump something, and the spring fully extends, and these fully extend. Because if you did not have these, and you had this little short lowering spring, it'd be fine to drive around on until you Dukes of Hazard jumped it, and now the spring is bouncing around in the strut, or in the rear perches and potentially falls out, uh, or not, it can't fall out, but it comes dislodged, which would cause problems. So we have a helper spring. You see a lot of coilovers have these as separate, uh, very, very thinly wound springs, but on a lowering spring, it's just a, a portion of it that are closer together, okay? It's important to understand that. Now let's get over to our strut. Okay, I'm lowering my car one inch. I bought H&R lowering springs. I'm going to only have one finger gap, bro. It's going to be rad. I'm getting Instagram cred, street cred from my lowering springs. <laughs> so um, the first thing to do is do some math. I want to do some math on the measurements of what a lowering spring is actually doing because most lowering springs are typically designed to lower your car around an inch. And that's the reason that you only want to usually lower about that much or, or close to an inch, maybe an inch and a half would be the very most, is you don't want to lower it anymore because you're going to see it's going to ride like complete shit because you're bottomed out all the time. So here's a Bilstein strut. That's the spring perch, the body, and the shaft. But on a Bilstein, it's actually an inverted strut. So the thick part is hanging out that you see, and the thin part you're used to seeing on a shock absorber is actually in the body. And it's held on the bottom with a nut, which you can undo and actually remove. It's exactly like a mountain bike suspension fork. So you can remove this to access the jaunts. But the jaunts is inside. And most people wouldn't probably touch it. Bill Stein has done the, the engineering to design that jaunts to work with this strut. Okay. So we're going to lower our car one inch. The first thing we need to do is do some measurements on the strut to understand what that one inch is doing. So the first measurement is, if we took the jaunts out, this strut is going to only have a total amount of movement of, I'm using easy numbers that are close to what my B8s are, it's about 4.75 inches on the front, okay? So total available is 4.75 inches. We're putting this progressive helper spring on now that's two and a half inches tall. And it can only compress under the very most, if you, if, you put a, if you put this in some sort of vise and just squeezed it to the max, this thing bottoms out at the thickness of the jaunts will be 0.75. So 2.5 uh, minus uh, 0.75 is 1.75. So it can compress 1.75 inches. But the maximum available travel is actually 4 inches. So you have 4 inches of that strut to work with when you lower your car. Okay. And so we're going to lower the car an inch, 
And what that's going to cause is when I drop the car down, when I lift the car all the way up, it looks like this. When I drop the car back down, it's going to compress three inches on that lowering spring. And so I'm replicating that with the pink lines down here. Oh my God, I'm riding on my bump stops. I can guarantee you anybody that's lowering their car, at least on the Volkswagen side, is on their stops all the time. And this is the exact same on a set of coilovers. If you're running uh, a Bilstein B14 or any of the popular coilovers, you are almost most likely sitting on your jaunces if you lower the car enough, okay? And if you don't lower it to touch the jaunce, you're probably not lowered enough to care. And so why are you lowering it in the first place? Okay, so now we're sitting on our jaunce. We had these springs that have some, these are compressed now, and... This is the part of the spring you're using, and it's some rate, 275 pounds per inch is kind of a typical one or 250 or something. But it's actually a little more because I'm, I'm inside a new, I'm in, I've got a helper spring in, that's adding to that spring rate, and it's now pushed me up a little bit. So maybe instead of 275, it's 285 for that one inch. Because remember, this is progressive. It starts off at a very low rate and then whoop, jumps up to infinite when it bottoms out. So it doesn't have a lot of impact on you sitting on it like that. But that leaves us one inch of bump travel available. That's all the math will show. You can move this thing one inch before you bottom out. And conversely, you would have three inches of extension. So you've taken the four inches of travel. In its factory, you probably had a little bit longer strut, maybe by an inch, and you had a bit more bump travel. So the bump might have been like three inches and the droop maybe three or something. They were probably more equal. Once you lower it, put the shorter strut on it. This is your situation. Okay? Now, what happens when you hit a bump? When you hit a bump, you're kind of going from this part of the progressive spring curve, because you're progressive now. This isn't linear. So even if you run linear springs, which is funny with people, when people go, oh my God, you have to run linear springs on your, uh, for lowering springs, it's still progressive because you have a jaunts bumper included. So that linear spring is still going to kind of follow a similar curve and you're going you're gonna to hit a bump and you're going to hit a big bump and the spring rate's going to ramp up really quick so you don't slam or bang. So what happens if you over lower your car? Why are really low cars bouncy? Why are your coilovers that are set slam so you have the one finger width or whatever the guys want, why do they ride like ass? They ride like ass because this is almost fully compressed. And so instead of starting here on the spring curve at zero and kind of going up for every bump, you're starting way out here. And guess what happens? The spring rate goes from some kind of lower rate to infinite like that. And so the car bounces down the road because you're too low. It's not because you're on the stop. Now you could cut these stops. And a lot of manufacturers will, of the lowering springs will say, with our kit, you will take three millimeters off or however they designed it. They may even give you uh, new stops. They won't give them to you for the Bilstein because they're inside. But a lot of kits include a set of uh, shorter stops, which may improve where you sit on this curve with lowering springs. But overall, unless they tell you to do that, somebody has done the math and engineered this thing to work with those jaunces as a spring helper. That's really my video. It's really just to talk about all these kind of different concepts and that riding on your bump stops, quote unquote, is actually not really a big deal. Um, it's, it's part of how the system was designed. It really shows you why, I mean, much less than one inch of bump travel, your car is going to be bouncy as shit. Now, even the only way to get rid of that is really, really high rate springs, but then you're getting your fillings knocked out driving around town. The point of all of this is to somewhat retain daily drivability, protect the suspension so you don't break something by bottoming out all the time, and not be overly progressive in the curve so that it's not bouncy. Okay, so I've put some links in the description. I will kind of have a photo of this so it's easier to deal with if you want to look at it. Um, I've included, I think throughout the video, actually, maybe I'll just do it at the end, what a John's bumper, uh, the rears look like. Now the rears are much different on my car. This strut is not inverted. It's normal and it's much longer. So you would have probably like uh, another inch and a half of potential available travel and the John's is really long. Um, so on my sport wagon, I'm this situation where I'm in the stop as I sit static on the back. I'm not. I can pull my boot up on the back and put my finger in between the stop and the strut. So I have a little bit more free travel out back. It doesn't matter. Again, the design of these springs 
by H&R has taken all of this into account. And so when you start cutting things, you're on your own potentially and maybe even make it worse. Now, the other thing you can do is there's a couple companies that make aftermarket stops. Uh, Dynan does, and actually APR just came out with some. And those stops are different and been designed to improve the situation. And so that could be another thing to look at is have a look at the APR uh, lowering spring jaunts bumpers or bump stops. Maybe that's a, a, another way to do it. Unfortunately, I think with Bill Stein, I've never taken my struts apart. Maybe next time I do some work on my suspension, I'll pop one apart and look at it. But I have no personal issue with how my mind works. This at first was shocking to me that I had only about an inch and it's like an inch and a quarter, I think, a travel actually, and that I was sitting on the stops. But that's intended to do that. It's intended to make this spring progressive enough not to slam and bottom out yet not be bouncy. Anyway, guys, that's my video for today fueled by a couple cups of coffee. Bye.